Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's see. Let me check my position. Yeah, it's all right. Um, I guess I could make my picture a little bigger maybe. All right. That's good. All right. Let me pull out of there. And I want, I got this email. I got it yesterday or day before. Let's see. Yeah, yesterday, September 20th. It's also a dream from one of you, Tracy. Okay, so she wrote, writes to me, and she says, I wanted to share a dream I had. I have had really challenging spiritual battles. That means you're on the right track, girlfriend, and keep it up, okay? Every one of us who's doing what the Lord wants is having tough spiritual battles, and even physical and in our worldly life. Okay, excuse me. The shrimp dip I had for supper, <clears throat> which had a lot of little shrimpies in it, a lady gave it to me. She'd made it for one of their parties, and I only got like a 30, and then she gave me the rest. Well, I didn't go. I'm not used to eating seafood. But, I mean, it was pretty mild. It wasn't very spicy. I had to add some spice myself. But, anyway, back to this. All right. Um, I told you before that God tells me a lot about the 144,000. Anyway, I have been repenting and really trying to walk in the Spirit recently. And I had some... Uh, wait a minute, did I go too far? I had some leaflets to deliver for world in need. And I honored that commitment, knowing that we should be faithful in small things. The Lord has been really speaking to me recently because my life has been a bit like the psalmists, truthfully, and I have needed all the comfort I can get. This next portion is real life, and then we'll tell you the dream. Anyway, what do you think of this? I was out delivering leaflets in real life, feeling really strong in the spirit, like God was just giving me that little bit of extra strength. Then a strange thing happened. I was outside some houses and felt a strong sense of deja vu. I froze there for a while and looked up and there was a sort of huge white van with a man with dark hair beside it. And he said, excuse me. Now, it was like I was sort of hypnotized almost to not respond. And to be honest, I don't tend to like to talk to men with vans next to them. That is smart. Ladies, don't ever stop to talk to men near vans. They will grab you right out of a Walmart parking lot and throw you in it. Always be aware of your surroundings. This is an evil, evil world we're living in. And uh, Satanists need victims constantly because they con continually have, have satanic rituals and they need women to abuse sexually. Little girls... Boys, too. Watch your kids when you go shopping. All right. Now, that's another subject. Let's get back to this. Uh, so, she doesn't like to talk to men. Okay. I'm always a little weary. Um, I guess... Let's see. Next to them. Okay. Always a little weary, I guess. So, I carried on delivering leaflets. Well, praise God he didn't grab you. Spoke to a woman about Jesus in town. That was good. So she wanted to know what did we think about that. I think she was very blessed not to have gotten grabbed and thrown in the van. Now, you didn't give much of a description of the guy. Was he in a suit? Did he have on dark glasses? You said he had dark hair. 
So I really don't know what to tell you other than your senses about, you know, not talking to men by vans has probably saved you. And the Lord, of course. A couple nights later, the Lord had me up at three, and I spent some time praying and praising and was drawn to a psalm entitled, in my Bible, The Messiah and His Bride. I underlined some verses in orange, and then I sort of thought of rapture for some reason and half hoped for a dream about it, and I went to sleep. Beginning of dream. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Y'all, I, I, I pray for dreams, messages, even a vision I said would be nice, Lord. I said, and I'm starting to have these vivid dreams. I've been having them since I started coming off all this medication. And I'm nearly off all of it. So... Part of the withdrawals from coming off of Effexor is having vivid dreams. Many people reported having night terrors. And one guy even admitted, he said, I guess if I get rid of my demons, the night terrors would stop. So I, I praise the Lord, I had already got rid of my demons. Most of them are not bad dreams. They're just very vivid. And I think, well, now I could receive dreams from the Lord. And I remember them a lot. I remember a lot of the portions of the dreams the next day, you know. I, but the, the dreams I have gotten from the Lord, I, I remember to this day. They're vivid in my imagination, even with a sort of bad memory that I got from the Emmy, I guess. And my aging, you know, when you age, your, your memory starts not being as good as before. Some people, they have excellent memories. Their aging doesn't bother their memory a bit. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. The point I'm trying to make is I know the dreams I had from God were from God because I didn't have to write them down. I know them. I can remember them. I can remember details like the one about the division in the church when we were hiking. Great big group. We came to a fork in the road. Half went this way, half went that way, you know. And then our group that went this way, we, we came to another fork in the road and we all kind of decided, okay, we'll go this way and I'm sure we'll meet up at the end. And half, went, you know, half of us went to the right. I kept going to the right. When we'd come to a fork, I'd go to the right. And after about three or four partings, it was down to three of us out of a huge maybe... I'm going to say 300 members of a church group went on this hike. Three people. That's 1%. I'm just guessing at the original number. That wasn't given to me. But I remember that dream plain as day and looking around and going, wow, there's just three of us. It was like 12 people went off to the left and three of us decided to stay to the right. At the last division, it was something, 10 to 12 people went that way, and three of us went that way. I'll never forget it, and there was a couple others I've had, and so I've been praying for dreams. Anyway, let me get on to this. Here's her dream. I was with some people watching Christopher Hitchens, the late atheist writer who was lying on the ground, talking. I never heard of him personally. I don't know what he wrote. I don't know anything about him. Okay, so moving on. I then saw some clouds with some writing on them, which I had a vague impression was of a preacher, but didn't know which one. You saw some clouds with some writing on them, which I had a vague impression was from a preacher i'm not sure you saw words in a cloud but you don't know which preacher i was then over water like on a ship floating along anyways i went through this door now she's on a ship 
floating along. She goes through a door. Then I was on the pavement, sidewalk. I think you call it in USA, above me the white van was in the sky with an orange and white ball hanging out from the back. Okay, so Trace, she doesn't live in USA. I didn't know that. So the day, a few days before, she sees a white van with a man with dark hair in real life. Now she's dreaming. She's on a ship. It's floating along. It must have docked. She goes through a door and she's on a sidewalk, a pavement sidewalk. I think you call it in the USA, which is, that's what we call it. We have sidewalks where you walk, where you don't have to walk in the street or the parking lot. All right, above her, the white van was in the sky with an orange and white ball hanging out from the back. That's probably symbolic of something. We need you dream, dream interpreter people to help us here. Like the same color I had been highlighting in, I heard a voice say, if you run, you might catch it. I saw the van in the sky. Sounds like they're doing something on signal. I'll check it later when I'm done with this. Like the same color I had been hiding in. Okay, sorry. This is really some... Well, if I touch my mouse, it'll get really big. I just don't want it to go away. No, it didn't do it. Oh, how about that? Praise the Lord. It's been doing it all night long. Maybe he fixed my mouse. Oh, nope, look. Look what happened. I just took my finger off. Oh, we, we can read it now, can't we? But I'll have to go back and forth. All right. Let's see. I saw the van in the sky appear to begin to descend. She was told, back up here. I heard a voice say, if you run, you might catch it. I saw the van in the sky appear to begin to descend, I went to a phone booth to phone the airline. There was a slim man next to it. Didn't get the impression it was Jesus, though, and I couldn't make the call. When I asked the Lord what the dream meant, Straight away, he took me to a passage about the 144,000 will be at Mount Zion. Right, that's, that's Revelation 14.4. Of course, I was thinking about being left behind, etc. But as we know, dreams don't always mean what we think. That is correct. Sometimes when you're dreaming something, you're not you. You're seeing something through the eyes of someone that will be left behind. You see, you're seeing a judgment of what's going to happen after we're gone. Before we come back or maybe even after the second rapture. When the multitude to the largest number goes. So keep that in mind. But here she says, I couldn't shake the fat thought off, though, of not making the rapture. I asked the Lord what the dream meant. Later, while meditating on his word, the Lord showed me the part of scripture where Paul says that a door to ministry was open to him, and I had the impression that it applied to me. Yet going through a door is very symbolic in a dream. Like Jesus says, I stand, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. And going through a door is symbolic of being raptured and going through the portal into heaven. I know that. So did you go through the door, the portal? Let's continue. Paul says that a door of ministry was open to him, and I had the impression that it applied to me. 
I think I asked him to confirm. And while studying later about the armor of the believer, that same part of scripture popped up again. Hmm. Interesting. So the way I read it is that the Lord has a ministry for me right near my hometown. Okay. I am not, I'm not gifted with interpreting dreams when things have hidden meanings. Some of them pop, come like Morella's dream. 